Um, but what is important for us is also to try to understand these challenges and how to solve the problem. Um, if we don't do that, and um, we just feel that if we push parties aside, um, then we are going to solve the problem. In real life, when you don't have parties, okay, governing you, in terms of several, more than one, uh, you would have what we call the authoritarian system. Sometimes it could be the military. Okay, in, in our history, we've had a lot of uh, military coups and military governments. And then when they come, after a while, we also fight and say, go, go, go. We want parties and our constitution and our rights. So it is important for you to understand that um, the parties are a problem, but if you dump them, your option is to have non-parties coming in. And the way I read um, the campaign or what people are saying about the parties, I have a feeling that uh, you wouldn't be, be hesitate to really dump the parties. If somebody came and said, hey, let's go away with the parties and let's govern ourselves. You probably would say yes, would you? No. Ah, very good, I like the no parts. Okay, so I am interested in how we would solve the problems that are facing us. And I can tell you that when I've looked at the arguments of those who say no, um, they all say that Article 55.3 should not be touched because it was there for a very important reason. And then they leave it there. And then when I listen to the yes people too, they say, well, touch it so that we can reform the system. And I think we need to find a connection to the two. Because what the no people are saying about what, how bad the system has become is true. But do we have solutions? Our solution would not be to throw away the parties, but rather to say, parties can do good and parties can do bad. They brought development to many countries that we want to migrate to. There is no country in today's world that has transformed its economy without the involvement of political parties. China has one party, but the Chinese also say they are multi-party democracy. Okay, but China has transformed its economy in 30 years, but it has a history of parties. And then you go to Western Europe, you also find that Germany has, Norway has, and then you go to the UK. Now you can look at America and what is happening and so on. So parties also have a developmental role, and in some places they have worked. So we want you to understand that our democracy today, 27 years on, um, has contributed to our democratic stability and our rights and so on, but it has also moved in a direction that is threatening us, and that is why we need to look at how to reform. Now, what you see is that in the last, since 2009 or 10, to date almost 10 years, We've been trying, one president after the other is trying to do something to the Constitution so that some problems in our democracy will be fixed. One of the problems that we've been facing seriously, you know our elections have become very scary. Yes, we are afraid of violence. And now we even hear of uh, vigilantes who are armed and who are associated with parties. That is not what democracy gives you. The more stronger your democracy, your, the level of threat of electoral violence should go down. And we are not having that. We are rather concerned, and everybody is concerned about 2020, what's going to happen. So there is too much fear. Actually, in democracy, you shouldn't have the level of fear we are entertaining now about parties and so on. Your freedom, the open space, the debate like uh, my brother did a short while ago, it's what you encourage, you encourage debates, you encourage arguments, but you also encourage consensus and you're trying to find solutions. So violence must come down in a democracy. When you see that in our democracy, violence is going up, there's a, there's a problem. And the idea 
of 55.3 begins with a search to deal with the violence that is recurring in our elections and is scaring all of us. Um, Article 55.3 is also part of the reasons why you talk about dualistic parties. I hardly hear many of you talking about multi-party. You all say, we don't want partisanship. We don't want two politic parties. When you say two politic parties, it means you have two giants, eh? two monopolies, and they, they behave in a certain no consensus. It, for parliament to amend 2431, it needs the support of the minority because it needs to have two-thirds majority of the total membership of parliament, they voting second reading, third reading. And they have to get two-thirds majority. It's not a small uh, figure to get. So it means that MPP alone cannot amend 2431. They need NDC. And NDC can also not amend it. Now, when you come to the referendum, you need a minimum of 40%. Turnout. That is not too difficult to get because the average turnout in elections without parties is around 33%. But when parties get in, it jumps to about 70, 73%. That's the so parties bring people, mobilize, and so on. But even if they succeed in doing that, then the yes vote should be 75% or 40. Again, no party can do that. So when we're dealing with constitutional amendment. Let us not reduce it to elections of candidates. Because every four years you elect candidates. But for constitutional amendment, it's a national effort. And all sides have to come in to attain the beauty so that what is changed works for everybody. And that is why it is important for us to be a little bit careful about us splitting ourselves into yes or no. Because yes or no is sweeter and entertaining if it's for election of candidates because every four years you change them. But for constitutional amendment, it's once in your lifetime. So the opportunity we have to vote in the forthcoming referendum, your generation might do it, but probably it will take another 25 years or 30 if any of those should happen. And so let me give you this example so that I can wrap up quickly. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've had two major constitutional amendment proposals. And they all have something to do with peace. When our late president, uh, the late president, uh, John Evans Atamils, uh, came to power after the election, it was one of the toughest elections we've had, but he became what was known as Asmjahin. He said he wanted to keep Ghana peaceful and better than he found it. And he was very disturbed about the threat of violence in our country. You know, he sponsored the biometric register. And on top of that, he also got uh, set up a commission, the Constitutional Review Commission, when you hear CRC. You could go, you see who the members were and so on. And they came up with a lot of important reforms. But those reforms could not be implemented under the NDC to the left office after the 2016 elections. They had 97 proposals to change in the constitution so that our system will be more stable, will be stronger, we can move towards development. So they called their report from uh, political constitution to developmental constitution or something. That's it. Yes, that's the head. They said our democracy must not give us just elections, but development, good education, higher economic growth, fine housing, fine employment, and so on. The things that will raise the living standards of our people. Why didn't we implement it? we could not find consensus between MPP and NDC. And they couldn't solve the problem. Um, uh, Free and Kandos, that I know what I'm talking about because I was talking to all of them. So we need consensus. And changes can come into the system. Some of the fears you have can be tackled when the rules change. So the referendum, then, two articles, OK? And the two articles, for the first time, we found consensus around them. Which is unusual. In our history uh, of constitution making, there is no consensus between two traditions. The UP tradition, Dankwa, Buzia, and the CPP, now also part of it is in NDC. 
<laughs> okay, you can you can argue with me here, but the, the there's also a history that is written. But it, it's okay, it's okay. Don't make it contemporary. We are talking about historical facts. Okay. So so what is important is that please for consensus, you for constitution amendment you need consensus. Now we have this cons we've had this consensus on between NDC, MPP, our former presidents, uh, some of the chiefs, some civil society groups and all that. But if that consensus has been kept, okay, and it hasn't, we didn't have the situation we have now where NDC is not with it anymore, we probably could speed up amending the constitution, the articles that will solve some of the problems you are talking about. If we cannot get that consensus, it's going to be difficult. And so we are going to live with the problem of the threat of violence, the poor living conditions you are complaining, the jobs you can't get, the partisanship, and so on and so forth. So it is crucial that we do something so that we can amend the two articles, because you need the two articles if development, economic development is going to take up if we are going to stop the polarization, if when we say do police, that, that those two giants, we have to deal with them, maybe make new laws to check them. You know, football has FIFA, you know that. But in our political party situation, we don't have a FIFA. And the electoral commission can't handle them because they do elections. But their behavior after elections is a different thing. But we need to reform the system. That is why I think that we should work hard, not so much enjoy the game going on, but to ask ourselves, what would Article 55.3 amended do for us as young people, the way you are? If our two parties agree on amending Article 55.3, and they also want to amend 2431 in Parliament, we're going to have a stronger local government system. It will even affect the center. And what you're going to see with winner takes all. Winner takes all simply means that in our current situation, the president is the only elected post. And then in the assemblies, the parties are not there. So Ghana has this rather unusual situation where a multi party democracy, when you go to the executive arm, the only person you see elected is the president. In places like Kenya, you have the parties elected at the regional level. They have 47 regions, they call it counties. And so different parties work together. Now, when different parties work together, they also bring the political stalemate and they're able to focus on development. In fact, they compete to deliver development projects and the economy grows. So our situation can be redeemed. But for us to do that, we must first of all come together to amend. Um, Article 55.3 and also get our parties to work together to amend Article 2431. So my, my, my message is that I do not want to um, deepen, I, I think we should reflect, all of us, and say these two articles are important and if we amend these two articles and our parties agree, the CRC recommendations are also very good for us, especially the non-entrenched ones, the ones that Parliament can amend to deal with institutions, to deal with security, and so on. So for the first time in our history, we are finding a way of bringing the changes that we need in our country so that our democracy will be stronger, and for, especially for your generation. That is why, as you do yes and no, ask yourself, for 55.3, it's not about elections. It's about reforming the system. The duopoly will be reformed. All these conditions that we are having in the system. And let me tell you why. That's my last point. Why it's going to reform. You see, it's a procedure. If you vote yes, because it's a procedure, you can't change anything in the structure now until you voted yes. If you vote no, nothing would happen. But if you vote yes in a referendum, what it means is it's not that the next day the parties are coming. No, the parties are not going to be elected. In fact, the parties will be elected in local government maybe after four years at assembly level, and probably two or three years 
after uh, at the MMDC level. Yes. In the interval are reforms. So your yes vote is just the authorization you give to the president and the government, the parliament, that you want change. And therefore, it is all the ideas that would help reform the system is what is going to come. And you have a voice in it. So we need our parties to work together because even if after the years when they are not working together, you can't get the changes you want. So I just want you to be, listen, read a bit, a bit more about this system. It's your turn to change the situation around. But if you play it with, with it like we elect people and you say no, when you vote no, we can't reform the system very much. Maybe we can elect MMDCEs, but it, 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 it is elections and it wouldn't solve some of the major problems we have. We need the space to change the system. Our, our experts will be part of it. Your representative stakeholders will be part of it. Our parties are in parliament. They will also do their bit. But this is the real unique opportunity we have. So let's play with no and yes. But let us also think about how we tell our leaders, come together and make these changes so that the economy will grow, will get better jobs, whether we are in a district or at the centre, we get better healthcare, better quality education, and so on. It depends on these two articles, 553 and 2431. But it's consensus. No one, of, not any one of the parties can handle it on its own. So that is where I leave it. I just want you to reflect.